Hello all my beautiful little unicorns and welcome back to my channel. If this is indeed the first time that you're on my channel, my name is Vanessa Samina and I would like to welcome you into the fam. So I'm not sure if you guys are able to see this, but look at the beautiful colors that the sun is reflecting from the individual decks. This just feels so, so magical and so special. So these readings are specifically designed for all my beautiful single unicorns because as you know, I like to do a little something special for all my singles during each month of the year, which is exactly why I have your February 2022 singles predictions prepared for you. And in order to help you figure out what or who is coming into your love life during February of 2022, I have these four groups that you can choose from. And I would like all of you beautiful souls to pick one of these four groups. If you absolutely cannot make up your mind between two groups, then feel free to tune into multiple groups. That's fine as well, because sometimes your personal reading can be a mixture between multiple groups. And each month, each time of the year is a little different. So some months you may feel like you need a few more messages while during other months you clearly feel drawn to just one specific group. So don't overthink it, just go with whatever resonates with you. So group number one corresponds to the Astral Realms Crystal Oracle deck. Group number two corresponds to the Gentle Heart Tarot deck. Group number three corresponds to the Pastel Journey Tarot deck. And group number four corresponds to the Heavenly Bodies Astrology deck. And as usual, the timestamps to all four of these beautiful groups can be found down below in the description box as well as pinned to the top of the comment section. So I will now provide you with a little moment of privacy so you can meditate on these four groups. Feel free to pause the video right here if it serves you and I'll speak to you momentarily. So by now, you've hopefully been able to select one of these four groups. I will be starting off your readings with the first group, which corresponds to the Astral Realms Crystal Oracle deck. So if this is the deck that you chose, then please continue watching. And to all of my other beautiful groups, I will catch you at the click of your timestamp. Hello, all my beautiful single souls within group number one. You chose the Astral Realms Crystal Oracle deck. So let's get straight into it so we can figure out exactly what's coming towards your love life during the month of February. So, okay, first up, we've got the emerald as well as the opal. Let's talk about it, group number one. First and foremost, within the emerald, I can see here that you're going through a time of understanding all of the little connections in your love life, why they are the way that they are and how they came to be. So by connections, I mean, for example, if you have had a lot of trust issues in the past, you will start to understand that it doesn't even necessarily need to be that you've had trust issues or still deal with trust issues because of past lovers that were not very healthy, but it could just also be that your parents made a lot of promises to you that they never kept, and that is something that fostered trust, trust issues within you, group number two. I can see here within the opal that rather than succumbing to feeling like the victim of the situation, you are very much focused on expansion, on growth, on self-development, and also on overcoming any of those traumas that have affected affected you and that have caused you in some way, shape or form to feel less confident about your value as a human being or as a lover. I can see here within the tangerine quartz that you're also taking a lot of time in order to get to that place of enlightenment. I can see here within Shakti that you are completely unafraid to also come to the conclusion that, hey, maybe you didn't treat yourself with as much love as you should have treated yourself with, and therefore you often chose partners that made the same kind of errors when being with you romantically, right? That did not value you the way that you know you really should be valued and the way that you know you deserve to be valued, group number one. So February is definitely opening up for you with a lot of truths, a lot of honesty and fearlessness of what you may find when you're being honest and truthful with yourself. Next up, we've got the Five of Swords. So in the Five of Swords, I can see here that these are areas of density in your love life that have existed for a long time.
long time that you're finally tackling during February. So by areas of density, I mean areas that you knew you had to look at a little more precisely, but you kind of failed to do so due to fear or due to not wanting to be honest with yourself about why you've gone through certain things in your love life in the past. But I can see here in February that you're fully ready to embrace any truth that may come up. The Ace of Cups is often a sign, a symbol of a new lover coming into your life, group number one. So I wouldn't be surprised if a new potential romance steps into your life during the month of February. And furthermore, we also have the sun, which is a very favorable card. It shows you having a good time, not feeling like you're missing out on anything and not longing or wanting for anything. And the sun showing up right after the Ace of Cups is definitely an indicator that your love life is going to feel really fulfilling on the front of actual love even though you have so much healing and growth work that you're doing even though you're looking into shadow work and dealing with parts of yourself where you actually felt shameful for a long time or that have been holding you back for a long time, group number one. Next up, we've got the Princess of Swords. So this could be a strong indication towards the type of person that will come into your life with whom you can imagine potentially being in a relationship with. And the Princess of Swords is someone who has strong air sign placement. So think Libra, Gemini, but also Aquarius, the Princess of Swords is someone who is most likely mentally or biologically younger than you. And with mentally younger than you, I mean, you're the old soul, group number one in the relationship or just generally in life. And the Princess of Swords is the one who's kind of just coming to a point where they understand themselves. In the Four of Cups, I actually do see that you might turn down the Princess of Swords, that you might kind of say to them, oh, I don't know, you're maybe a little too young or a little too immature for me. And I don't really know if this is something that can work out. So even though you have this feeling of, yes, okay, I am in a good spot. I understand my value. You're not going to settle for just anyone. So the Prince of S Princess of Swords in connectivity to the Four of Cups definitely shows me here that there is a little bit of distance between the Princess of Swords and you wanting to start a relationship with this air sign and also understanding that you don't have to rush into anything. And it's fun to have that connection with them but you don't really know if they're a forever partner. You don't really know if this is a relationship that's going to last for a lifetime or for many, many years. And that makes perfect sense group number one because you're just meeting this person in February obviously you don't have to make any big or hasty decisions immediately but nevertheless they wish that you would because they kind of just want to have an answer and they just want to know whether you want to be with them or not next up we've got the eight of pentacles so in the eight of pentacles or eight of coins however you'd like to call it. In this deck, it's called the Eight of Coins, basically the Eight of Earth. I can see you working really diligently on your goals when it comes to expansion in your career and your professional life as well. And I can see here with the Five of Swords that there are definitely a lot of conflicting thoughts, not in a way that causes agony, but more in a way that you're dealing with procrastination and you're spending a lot of time thinking about your love life and thinking about what's coming next in your love life that it is distracting you a little bit from work. So we've got the Queen of Chalices as well as the Knight of Chalices show up for you. So water sign energy is definitely here as well. The Queen and the Knight of Chalices are a representation of Scorpios, Cancerians, but also Pisces and I do want you to understand here that we have someone who is a mixture of an old soul but also a very young bubbly personality so they kind of have 
different facets, different layers to them that they are revealing to you. But I do also see here that friends and family who have strong water sign placements within their birth chart are also asking you about your love life, about what's going on within your relationships. And they're being a little bit nosy. I can definitely see in the Five of Swords that you're not really into it and that it's something that you kind of swat off by telling them that you're busy with work or you have other commitments that need to be dealt with. I can see here within the three of coins that the month of February is definitely a month of generosity in your love life. So I wouldn't be surprised if you get invited to lunch or dinner that you don't need to pay for. And just overall also feeling like you're being made to feel special, feeling like someone is going that extra mile in order to make you feel good and appreciated and in order to show you that they care about you and that they find you attractive in a mental and physical type of way. Next up, we've got the King of Crystals. So we have a lot of people within your reading, group number one. So do definitely understand that there are a lot of potentials here for your love life during the month of February. So this is definitely bringing us to an understanding that you're either going to be meeting quite a few new people if you're, for example, going on a trip or switching to a different work department, spending time with friends and family. There will be some sort of gathering where you can meet a lot of different people who may be potential lovers. But you can also do that by going online, for example, using dating apps. There are different ways how you are going to go about meeting all of these different personality types. The King of Crystals has this fire sign energy. They are an Aries, a Sagittarius, or a Leo. The King of Crystals is someone who's definitely older than you, who's definitely very mature, all of my souls within group number one, and they too are interested in being in a romantic relationship with you. They are interested in a little bit of commitment going on between the two of you. I can see here within the ace of diamonds reversed that this is definitely a time of your growth mentally and in love being accelerated whereas when it comes to your professional life and your career everything is slowing down a little bit because your head is in a completely different spot because you feel infatuated with lovers. You feel infatuated by love in general and figuring out more about how you've come to this place in your love life, why you're single, and if it was by choice or due to fears, and also how you want to move forward, whether you want to stay single for a little while longer, or whether being in a committed relationship is really for you. You have other things going on, and this is something that you have to remind yourself to not feel ashamed of, group number one, because in our society, we always push this toxic hustle culture of constantly needing to work, constantly needing to get things done, but truth of the matter is some of us just also need time to figure out what's going on within, what's going on with ourselves and how we can actually have healthy relationships in our lives, healthy relationships with ourselves and often busy work schedules or school schedules, they just don't permit that. But that doesn't mean that you can't take that time for yourself and simply make that administrative decision to do so for your own sanity. I can see here within the Queen of Cups reversed that the Queen of Cups reversed, which is actually the same card as the Queen of Chalices, this is not a lasting situation. So if there is a water sign who's interested in you, group number one, this is not a relationship that's going to be healthy or that's going to have the longevity that you desire. As I do see here within the Empress reverse, that it's actually going to be a little detrimental to your career and your professional life because the Queen of Cups, this water sign, this Pisces, Scorpio, or Cancerian is taking you away from work for way longer than necessary. There may be a bit of a drama queen, kind of a bit of a dramatic person. So you're being called to look out for that and also to avoid these types of signs during the month of February because there isn't really a favorable one here for you. 
Next up, we've got the Knight of Swords show up within your reading, which is a symbol of you being very direct, open, and honest. Make your intentions of where a relationship may go very clear to anyone who you're speaking to in order to avoid any type of hurt feelings, emotions, and just overall bad energy around you due to people feeling like you're playing with their heart. Next up, group number one. Okay, these cards are sticking together a little bit. We've got balance. So I can see here within balance, group number one, that actually your love life is going to come to a place of more balance because you're spending more time sorting out your love life, sorting out what you want out of love, and being unafraid to look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. So your relationships are thriving, whereas your career is definitely having a bit of a slower month during the month of February. And I can see here within rejection that you're definitely also spending a lot of time thinking about how you can reject certain people, which is what we were talking about. You ensuring that you know your time is valuable and that just because someone is interested in you doesn't mean that you have to give everyone a chance because that's just a waste of time if you already know that they're not the one for you. So be very cautious about how you spend your limited time and energy during February group number one, as being cautious is definitely the deciding factor between you having a month of learning, liberation, and also feeling really strong in your romantic life or feeling as though everything is all over the place and also feeling bad about yourself because you are stringing so many people along who are interested in you. I can see here within happiness that the month of February is definitely a month that can turn out very favorable for you. The most important thing for you is to just be honest to reject whoever needs to be rejected. That doesn't mean that you have to be mean or make them feel unwanted or unattractive, but just being honest and telling people that you're not interested as you do have so many different options that are available for you in love during the month of February, group number one. So we're at the end of your reading and I hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it insightful. Make sure that you leave a little sun emoji down below in the comment section as you did have the sun show up within your reading to let me and others know that you made it to the end of your prediction. Thank you so much for being here and spending this divine time and space with me. For more videos on love, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and check out my playlist on all of the love predictions that I've ever done. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if there are hundreds of different love predictions that I've done to date. So make use of all of the free readings that I have on my channel and I'll catch you during one of my upcoming coming predictions. Hello, group number two, and welcome to your singles February 2022 prediction. You chose the Gentle Heart Tarot deck in order to receive your reading. This is what the beautiful Gentle Heart Tarot deck looks like. In case you didn't know, this is the tarot deck that I self-published, authored, and have available for purchase as well as worldwide shipping straight from my website, bowlife.com. The link is in the description box if you're interested. So first up, we've got the five of swords for you as well as the knight of swords so group number two i can see here that in february someone's getting a little frustrated about the love situation with you so it could be that this person is crushing on you but you don't even know that they exist you don't even know that they are crushing on you and the knight of swords i can see that this person has strong air sign energy so think Aquarius, Gemini, but also Libra. And in the Five of Swords, I can see that they're definitely wondering when they're finally going to have a chance to confess their love to you. I can see here within the Five of Cups reversed that they're growing increasingly impatient and that they wish that they had a way to be a little bit more smooth or a little bit more courageous. But their fear of you rejecting them is just so big, group number two, that again, they they may have not even attempted to make a tiny little move towards you because of those fears. But group number two, this is just the start of your February singles prediction. Let's move further into it. We've got the Queen of Crystals next. So in the Queen of Crystals, I can definitely see that for you, the month of February is a month of standing up for yourself in your career. You're not afraid 
to tell other people about inequality in the workspace. You're not afraid to let other people know when they're doing something that simply isn't right. And you're going to stand up for what you deem to be the right thing to do. The Ten of Cups shows me here that actually when it comes to your romantic life, the month of February is a very favorable month. So even though someone is clearly a little bit angry or frustrated with themselves and the fact that they are too afraid to chat you up or to make a move. I can see that this isn't something that is directly affecting you because you most likely also don't even know that this person is into you. The Ace of Swords shows me here that when it comes to your romantic life, you definitely have a completely fresh perspective on what healthy relationships look like to you. I see that here in connectivity to the Ten of Cups group number two and the experiences that you've had during 2020 and 2021. In the death card, I can see that you're leaving behind all expectations about love and you're defining what works best for yourself without taking into account tradition or what other people may say is the perfect relationship. So for you, the perfect relationship may not be the traditional cis straight relationship with a man and a woman and the man bringing home the bacon or however you'd like to call it and the woman doing more domestic work. You may be in a situation where maybe same sex relationships are more interesting to you or are also a part of what you consider. Maybe you want a very equal distribution of work and resources and also a equal distribution of power within the relationship, no matter what the topic or the subject is that you're talking about with a partner. So that is where I can definitely see here the Ace of Swords, the Ten of Cups, and the Death card that you're making your own definition of what a healthy relationship is. And that's the best thing you could do for yourself, group number two, because honestly, society doesn't seem to know what healthy is. And we have proven that over and over again. So the best thing as a human being at this point is to listen to your intuition and do what feels right to you because society is definitely also pushed by different people's agendas to do different things or to see certain relationships or certain jobs, certain ways of life as healthy and others as um, kind of a threat, if you will, or anything that is too eclectic or that isn't normal as a threat. I can see here within the citrine, that the month of February is bringing you not only clarity on what you want, but also a lot of good fortune and good luck. The citrine is a stone that brings financial success as well. So this is a very fortunate little stone that you received within your reading, group number two. And it is also connected to the symbol of the sun, which is a very beneficial symbol to receive in any pick a card reading because it definitely stands for joy for warmth and for you being in a place of happiness. Next up, we've got the Moonstone. The Moonstone corresponds to the experience of transcendence, of not feeling as though you have to wait to see whether other people approve of your way of life or the way that you would like to continue relationships. You are more about understanding that there will always be naysayers. There will always be people who have an opinion about what you're doing. So you might as well just live however you see fit and however makes you happy because at the end of the day you won't please everyone so you might as well just please yourself. I can see here within weight that it's not yet time for you to change your relationship status officially during the month of February. It's not yet time for you to solidify any new romantic connection. And group two, this has to either do with you not knowing the person who you're thinking of solidifying a relationship with. And group number two, this most likely has to do with you either not knowing the person well enough by February yet, or just overall not having the right person present 
confident in your love life with whom you can be in a soulmate type of relationship with. So the universe is trying to caution you from making any hasty decisions or getting into a relationship ahead of time. You have all the time in the world, so don't rush anything. And all paths lead home. Do know here that if a relationship is meant to be, it won't matter when you actually say out loud that you are in a committed relationship. It won't matter how many people know that you're together or not, or whether you said that it's official or not. When two people have found each other and they know that this is a committed relationship that they want to be in, there won't be any questions. There won't be any infidelity. There won't be any kind of looking around to see if there are better options. You will be committed to each other regardless of what you have defined the relationship as. So that's also why you're being called to wait because getting to know each other is the most important thing. But of course, if it's the right person, you won't have to jump ahead of everything and already say you're in a committed relationship until you've gotten to know each other really well because you won't have to worry about them straying or about them getting to know someone else because that feeling of wanting to figure out whether this could exclusively be a relationship that lasts forever is a mutual feeling that will exist. So there is no reason to be worried or afraid. Next up, we've got fall into my arms. So in falling into my arms, I can see here that you will completely surrender to love during the month of February. You're not trying to resist. And also any type of commitment issues or trust issues are in a space where you feel like it's not just manageable, but it's actually non-existent. And called, I can see that it's time for you to step up and to go to where your soul is calling you towards and to not be afraid of doing it alone because I think often we're also worried that we might get in a relationship and the person who we're with may hold us back or may not allow us to embrace ourselves fully and the way that we see fit. But group number two, I want you to keep in mind that the right person or the person who is meant to be in a committed romantic relationship with you is someone who wants to see you step up. This is someone who wants to see you follow your path and conquer all the goals and dreams that you've set out for yourself. So don't be afraid about them kind of um, frowning upon it or not being as supportive as you need, to, need them to be. I can see here within the star that but the month of February is a very hopeful month for you. So for the past months, group number two, you may have been in a spot where you felt as though love was kind of dry or not really doing too much. But I see in the star, as well as the Princess of Pentacles, that things are changing rapidly in February and there are more exciting ways how you're spending your time when it comes to your love status. Okay, so by more exciting ways, I mean going on dates, going on dates that are unconventional and different, also spending time with friends and family talking about love in a really fun and easygoing type of way. And the Ace of Wands also shows me that there's a lot of passion here when it comes to your romantic life. So I wouldn't be surprised if you also felt empowered to discover more of your own wants and needs and things that you like about your body and ways that you like to be touched and held and spoken to. And you can explore all of that by yourself. You don't need someone to do that with. This is something you can get to know on your own. And the Eight of Cups does also show me here that you're getting rid of some old belief systems that made you feel like you had to clam up when it came to love, that made you feel like you had to put on a certain facade or act a certain way in order to be lovable. And this could be rooted in tradition or the society that you grew up in because, for example, and this is just an example, in a lot of societies, women are meant to do more domestic work and they're meant to have ambition, but not too much. You know this reference if you've listened to that Beyonce song. So do know here within the Eight of Cups that this is something that you're finding does not apply to you, just traditional ways of thinking that kind of limit your horizon or limit the things that you are able to accomplish should you bow to those traditions. And you're not doing that. You're standing up straight. You're 
you're standing up tall and you're walking away from whatever makes you feel like you would be forced to make yourself smaller, to make yourself more bite-sized so you're digestible for the people around you. You're not about that, group two. Next up, we've got mystery. So I can see here that in February, you have this mysterious air and aura about you. You may not notice this about yourself, group number two, but I definitely see that potential lovers find you to be hard to read and very mysterious. And furthermore, in hunger, I can also see here that the more mysterious you seem, it's like the more people want to get to know you. And I think a lot of people kind of don't understand that this feeling of you being mysterious is actually just coming from a place of you knowing your worth and your value and not needing to overshare or overcompensate. So you're not trying to be mysterious. It's basically like just happening for you, group two. And I do also want you to be cautious in February. I definitely want you to ensure that you're taking time to not just be cautious about what you're doing next, but also to be cautious about how people who surround you react to your emancipation, to the fact that you're feeling strong and empowered and walking away from certain traditions. Surrender to the outcomes that you will find. So the outcomes could be that some people distance themselves from you, for example, because you are threatening their worldview by not bowing down to society, by not caving to traditions. You are definitely putting their entire existence in a place where they would have to question whether it's right or wrong, and that makes certain people so uncomfortable that they may actually end up walking away from you or just slowly distancing themselves pay attention to that and also remind yourself here within the citrine that this clarity is clarity that serves you because in the end that shows you who's truly here for you and your happiness and for you to lead a life that makes you happy and who is here to lead a life that confines them to tradition and maybe they're happy in that and it's not up to us to judge but at the same time you do not have to feel pressured to lead life the same way. That is their choice. That is their karma. Your choices create your karma. So group two, this is the reading that I received for you. Leave a star emoji in the comment section to let me and others know that you made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much for being here. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out the rest of my love predictions. I'm pretty sure I have hundreds of readings at this point on my channel. So feel free to watch those, to look into them, to relax, chill, and vibe. Thank you for being here and for spending this divine time and space with me. And I'll catch you during one of my upcoming predictions. Hello, group number three, and welcome to your February 2022 singles love prediction. You chose the Pastel Journey Tarot deck in order to help guide you through the month of February in your love life. This is the beautiful Pastel Journey Tarot deck, and for all of you who are new, this is actually the tarot deck that I authored and published. The link is below. You can get it from bowlife.com, which is my website. So we've got the Two of Swords, the Eight of Pentacles, as well as the Ten of Swords. So I can see here that when it comes to your love life during the month of February, group number three, you're definitely feeling a little indecisive about what you should do because you're over making the same mistakes again and again. So there are certain parts of your love life that you're not quite satisfied by and you definitely do not want to continue to feed into them and the eight of pentacles shows me that you're not afraid to roll up your sleeves and to put in some work in order to change things and you've already done quite a lot when it comes to that for your career, your studies, just overall your professional life, but now you have to do the same for your love life. And in February, you're not 100% sure how you can turn your love life into something that you're 100% satisfied with and that makes you feel as though you're completely fulfilled and you have nothing else to wish or ask for. The Seven of Swords does also show me here that not everybody has the best intentions for you. So I can see that there are some friends or family members who actually kind of want you all to themselves and they don't realize that that's kind of like a narcissistic selfish thing to do but it is however as already mentioned they don't quite understand that so it's very important for you to decide for yourself how you want to spend your time 
and also what you want to do romantically whether you want to prioritize finding romantic love or remain single for longer don't allow people who constantly reassure you of how cute or cool it is to be single and you don't need a man or a woman or a partner don't let them make you feel as though this is not something that you can want and that's okay to want because there's definitely a part of our culture and our society that kind of idolizes being a single in a way that shames people for wanting a relationship telling them well you first have to love yourself you can't want to be in a relationship you need to allow it to just come to you don't force it don't pressure it well i mean some of us just truly do want to be in a relationship and that's fine and you shouldn't feel shamed for that you shouldn't allow people to tell you to not force it or not do too much if you're just a very romantic person that's a beautiful thing worth honoring and that's definitely never something that you should be made to feel ashamed of the high priestess here connects to the number two and i do also want you to understand that the number two speaks of balance you already had the two of swords show up so the number two is an important number for you during the month of february which is so fitting right we've got the year 2022 which is filled with the numbers two and i also did go into detail about what that means in my 2022 mega prediction that's on my channel it's like a five hour long video so i also explained a numerology of two but the month of february is also the second month of the year so the number two will most likely show up for you over and over again as a synchronicity and i don't want you to be worried about that i simply want you to know here in connectivity to the high priestess that this is actually a sign that you're on the right track that you're going in the right direction with your romantic life and just life in general and to follow the number two for the month of February. The Eight of Swords shows me here that there are definitely some self-limiting beliefs that are still present in February for you, group number three, and that you would definitely benefit from working on and from trying to simply get out of your head and allow for yourself to live more freely without self-limiting beliefs holding you back from living Living your best life. The Ace of Wands is a card that shows new beginning when it comes to fun ideas and things that you're thinking of doing that you're looking forward to trying out. And here with the number two, again, allow that to guide you. So if you constantly see the number two around a hobby that you've been thinking of getting into, try that new hobby you know apply for that club that you've always wanted to be a part of get yourself the gear that you need or just the tools that you need to draw paint create make music maybe start a new sport maybe be part of a book club simply allow yourself to be part of that because i can also see here that chances are high that you might meet someone who you have a romantic connection with in one of those areas of your life Next up, we've got the Emerald. So in the Emerald, I can see here that you're making connections between things that seemed like a mystery in the past and now all of a sudden understanding what these meaningful coincidences really are and what type of power they hold in your life. We spoke about it in the High Priestess with the number two, the two of swords, the fact that the month of February also corresponds to the number two. So in the Emerald, I see you making a lot of connections between numerology and your personal experience on this planet and being able to foretell or foreshadow things happening just through your own understanding of your personal numerology and what numbers are drawn into your life during what times of your existence and making those connections finding the logic in it the moonstone here shows me that you're feeling like you're going through a month of transcendence group number three you feel as though nothing can really touch you that is low vibrational and this is really beautiful energy for you to have and amazing confidence for you to bring with you for the month of february it will serve you greatly the desert jasper here shows shows me that it's also a month of resolution in your love life so i wouldn't be surprised if a past lover tries to hit you up again tries to message you dm you send you a whatsapp whatever it is do know here within the desert jasper that they're trying to resolve the situation and possibly get back with you or see if there's any chance of them getting back into your good books and trying to 
see if you would forgive them, trying to see if you would give them a fresh start. The best thing for you to do though, group number three, is to just be flattered by that and move on. As I can see in the Ten of Swords, the Seven of Swords, and the Eight of Swords, that they are not trustworthy and it's simply a little ego stroke that they're trying to facilitate through using you. So be strong. We have that in the Strength card. Don't give in. Even if you do still have real feelings for a past lover or just someone who you were in a romantic relationship with, if you still have a soft spot for an ex, the best thing to do is to probably not not even reply to any messages because that just opens the door for them to kind of lull you into something to sweet talk you so know yourself group number three that's the best thing you can do for your love life during the month of february the ten of diamonds here shows me that focusing on your career and your professional life is going to serve you immensely so whenever you feel a moment of weakness or a moment of falling back into old toxic habits and patterns remind yourself what you're working towards and what your greater goals are and ask yourself if this person this relationship or just this toxic pattern finds any space in that vision for your future and the answer is most likely going to be no so that can again help strengthen you from not allowing for things that don't serve you to get a foothold during the month of february Next up, we've got the Three of Swords. So group number three, the Three of Swords reverse shows me that you're recovering from heartache and heartbreak. The Three of Swords is a card upright that definitely states a very heavy heart and hurt emotions and feelings. But the fact that this card is showing up in reverse shows that you're actually doing some deep healing. You're actually moving forward from someone hurting you really badly. And it can sometimes take months for you to truly start healing, even though you've already cut off any connection with that person or that particular group of people. It can take a very long time for the healing process to actually start, even though you've maybe already been out of contact for a prolonged amount of time so do know that february is a strong month for healing for you the ten of crystals shows me that it's a lot of work and you're kind of also over it a little bit you're over the fact that the people who cause trauma and who behave in a way that is hurtful those are not the same people who are paying for your therapy right it's usually just you so it's like if they're going to cause trauma they can at least foot the bill they can at least make sure you can get therapy which doesn't even start to cover all of the mental agony so it's almost like in our society and i know this sounds really over the top group number three but i'm sure that you'll understand this it's as though the people who cause the most trauma and heartache they're allowed to do it for free and like you need to be the one working on it investing your time and energy and as i already mentioned sometimes money getting things like gratitude journals getting help such as therapy all of those things are not cheap all of those things take a lot of time and effort to be consistent with so already think kind of ahead of the curve and ahead of the game and if someone is showing you their true colors and those colors don't seem very bright or very pretty to you and they seem like they wouldn't have a problem hurting you try to distance yourself from the start before you end up having to foot the bill for the trauma that they caused. It's not always possible, especially if there are parents involved. I mean, you don't choose your parents, but what you can do is rid yourself of what they did to you internally, the type of hurt or trauma of or self-confidence issue that they have caused. You can work on that. You can cleanse yourself from it. And it's definitely not something that I want you to feel like you will be a victim of for the rest of your existence because it's simply not true. However, I can see here in frustration that Yes, you will hit walls where you feel frustrated, group number three. You will get yourself into situations in February where you're kind of annoyed overall with how things played out and with situations and how they're progressing and developing. But at the end of the day, remind yourself here that the most important thing is to have inner peace because that's something that no one can take away from you. That's something that you can't pay for, that no amount of money can give a human 
human being. That's something you have to find within. And it's so valuable and precious that when you get to that point that you master your own state of inner peace and you know exactly how to channel it and exactly how to get there, you will find that this truly is the biggest gift that you could give yourself. Next up, we've got the Star Keeper that popped right out of this pile. This card is all about seeding the light by staying grounded and reminding yourself here that again staying grounded staying rooted in peace is the healthiest thing that you can do for yourself and all of those surrounding you the watering your garden card shows me here that nourishing yourself body care tenderness and rest is super important for you group number three so it is also important for me to be honest with you about your love life prediction and we don't really have a lot of new people coming into your love life for the month of February. February is more about you. February is more about cleansing your energy field, resetting, finding a way to get that inner peace settled and sorted for yourself, not really being preoccupied with new lovers. So in watering your garden, do you understand here that nourishing yourself and being tender to yourself, that's the first start, that's the first step towards truly loving yourself and also attracting a partner who treats you in that same tender and respectful way. You don't have to be perfect by the time you actually enter a romantic relationship, but it's definitely important to have done some work on yourself beforehand in order to ensure that you're attracting and selecting partners who are healthy to you and who will treat you with lots of nourishing energy that brings you energy, not a partner that just makes you feel stressed out. Next up, we've got the messenger. So I can see here in the messenger that we have this serious energy. And by serious, I mean the extraterrestrial type of energy, not serious as in being very um, certain about something, if that's like a way to describe it. So do know here within the messenger that you're also most likely going to receive some sort of notification, some sort of message that is important for your love life. We spoke about an ex or just a past lover trying to come back. That is an important thing because it will show how strong that you truly are depending on how you react to receiving that message. But furthermore, if you're able to not succumb to the temptation of maybe writing down how hurt that you felt or giving them an opportunity to explain themselves by simply knowing that this relationship isn't for you and it didn't work out for a reason and moving on, you're actually opening up the possibility for a new person to message you, a new person to find a connection with you. So the most important thing for you to know here for February is that it's not yet time for you to enter into a twin flame or soulmate relationship. And I know group number three, this is not a popular thing for me to be saying as a tarot card reader, as a YouTuber, right? The best thing I could say is in every reading that you have a soulmate like coming for you you or a forever lover, some twin flame experience. But to me, the most important thing is to be truthful, whether people like it or not, and whether that gains me popularity or subscribers or not. The most important thing is to read the cards as they are. So it's very clear here that February is not yet the time for you to enter into any new relationships and that things are still being woven. Like we were talking about, you're still in the process of sorting and figuring out some things with within your own internal state of being, you still have some old energy, okay? So let's just say old relationships, old bonds that are trying to resurface that you kind of need to prove that you've outgrown and that you actually believe that you deserve better and more by turning those people down and rejecting any partners that you know are not healthy for you. So group three, I hope that you can appreciate my honesty. Leave a little lion emoji down below in the comment section to let me and others know that you made it all the way to the end of your prediction. Thank you so much for being here and for spending this divine time and space with me. And I'll catch you during one of my upcoming readings. Hello, group number four, and welcome to your singles February 2022 love life prediction. You chose the Heavenly Bodies astrology deck. We're going to get straight into it. So lean back, relax, and enjoy this highly personalized reading. We've got the Libra, 
as well as Sagittarius card and the first house. So group number four, I can see here that Libra and Sagittarius energy are going to be prevalent in some way, shape or form for you in February. And this has to do with love. Your first house concerns your individuality, your self image, as well as your approach to life. So I can see here that the Libra and the Sagittarius are going to find that very interesting when it comes to being in a romantic relationship. So these are the two signs with who you are most most likely going to link up romantically during the month of February. A little something about Libras and Sagittarius is Libras are air signs. They are very considerate. They're all about harmony and fairness, and they always seek that balance. That's why their sign has a little scale to it. In the Sagittarius, we've got a fire sign. This is a fire sign that is very optimistic, that loves to explore, go on adventures, and craves freedom. So these are the two types of people that you're drawing into your life when it comes to love and romance. These are the two types of signs that are especially drawn to you during the month of February. But group four, let's move further into your reading to see what else is coming towards your love life. We've got the three of cups, so I see you having a good time and celebrating, so I also wouldn't be surprised if you're spending more time with Libra and Sagittarius friends and you're having a good old party. But the three of cups, it does also show me that going out and Having fun is a part of February, regardless of who you're with. So the Three of Cups is also a card that shows that you're feeling really content with your social life and that you're starting to realize that it doesn't matter whether you have a huge group of friends or whether you just hang out with the same people on a regular basis. The most important thing is that you're having a good time and you're having fun and not what it looks like and not what Instagram or social media may think or may try to portray as the ideal friend group or social life. The death card is a clear indicator for February that there are fresh beginnings for you ahead. So fresh beginnings may mean that you're actually axing off someone with whom you used to talk in a flirtatious way that maybe a potential lover is going to end up not really sticking around. And the six of cups shows me here that you feel as though you have so many different options it's like why settle for less and i'm all about this energy group number four i'm all about the fact that you're empowering yourself and that you don't feel the need to have someone stick around that isn't really meant to stick around with you just because you're afraid that maybe you'll be alone for a prolonged amount of time or maybe nobody else will come along but i see here in the six of cups as well as the death card that you're not worried about that here in february you're actually feeling really strong and you're really Realizing just how worthy you are of new relationships, being able to come in and out of your life and never feeling like you're going to die alone or like you're going to just overall be alone at any point in time even if you don't want to. The Ace of Wands does also show me that you're going on new adventures that you've never gone on before with other people in February. I see that here in connectivity to the Three of Cups. So I think going on a hike to a place you've never been before, maybe going to a bar or a restaurant that you've also never visited, where you've never tried the food, but I can see that for the month of February, this is definitely something that you are exploring, looking into your making memories because 2022 you may have already told yourself is like a year of it finally being your turn and you finally being able to do the things that you've always wanted to do and you're definitely displaying that i can see that next up we've got the death card again so group four i definitely don't want you to worry about the death card showing up it very seldom means literal death the death card actually stands for fresh beginnings and just something needing to come to an end that you already knew was on its last leg. So again, this can be a romantic relationship, but it can also be a toxic friendship or connection to a parent. A lot of people go through phases where they just simply have to realize when friendships have run their course and when you have to ax off certain people in order to make room for others. Because every time you say yes to a friend or a family member, even though you don't really want to say yes to hanging out with them or doing anything with them, that means that you're actually saying no to spending time with other people. You're saying no to having time to make new connections that can serve you a lot more. 
So remind yourself here that whenever you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to something else, right? It's like if you're saying yes to unhealthy meals, you're saying no to feeling healthy. If you're saying yes to procrastinating, then that means you're saying no to a stress-free life, to getting things done in time. Keep that in mind. There are always two sides to consider, and the universe definitely wants you to just stop overthinking group number four. Even right now, you're probably getting in your head a lot, okay? So leave a little X emoji down below in the comment section to kind of solidify that you're not going to do that, that it stops right now. You're not going to overthink these, these situations. You know exactly who you need to get rid of in your life and whose relationship is not really serving you, with whom you're spending too much time even though you don't feel as though it's doing anything for you. So be confident in the fact that you are a discerning, smart individual who can decide for themselves what relationships are worth keeping and what relationships really need to be left behind moving forward from February. I can see here within frustration that there is definitely going to be a little moment where you feel like you just can't do it, where you feel frustrated and you're asking yourself why this had to happen for you. Why February? Why did you ever have to be in a situation where a relationship has run its course? But the most important thing that you can do is to keep your happiness in mind, group number four. So many of us, we kind of forget what the entire goal is here. The goal is to be happy. The goal is to feel as though you have lived an existence that made you fulfilled a life well lived that is the ultimate goal so if certain people aren't facilitating you to live a life that you're proud of they've got to go group number four there's no other way to put it if you look at that friend or that family member and you feel as though if you spend time with them or the more time with them you spend the more you realize like this isn't a life well lived if you were to think back at all of your memories with them and you feel like they're just kind of meh or not really that great if tomorrow was the last day that you had in this existence Group number four, who would you spend time with? And everyone else has got to go. Next up, we've got the strength card. The strength card shows me here that of course you're gonna have to be really strong to stand up for yourself. But know that surrounding yourself with the wrong types of people or people who always complain, those people are holding you back from finding romantic love. Those people are holding you back from having a love life that you are happy with, whether that's being single for a little longer and just being happy with that. Because again, the wrong people will continuously question why you're single. The wrong people will make you feel like something is wrong with being single. So make sure that you're strong enough to remind yourself that you need people around you who support you, whether you want to be single or whether you want to be in a relationship. And the type of people who are affecting you negatively, they will have something negative to say regardless. When you're single, they'll say that, well, you know, you got to put yourself out there. Well, you don't want to seem desperate. That's why people don't want you. Or maybe you're just not trying hard enough. You're just not open enough. You're just not confident enough. And then the moment there is some sort of romantic situation going on, they don't like the person or they're going to tell you how all of a sudden you've changed how all of a sudden you don't have time for them anymore so it's very important for you to remember here that the right people will support you being single or in a relationship or in any in-between stage and the people who are more interested in what they can gain from you and how you can serve them they are the types of people who will always have something negative to say so you might as well just lead and live your life for yourself group number four cut off those leeches the king of swords shows me that again you will have to bring out your leadership qualities the king of swords represents that this is a representation also of air signs as the suit of swords corresponds to the element of air so think to yourself libra gemini but definitely also Aquarius. Know here in the King of Swords that this is a very mature way of thinking, but also being cutthroat. Business is business, and you only have a finite amount of time in your life, so sometimes you just have to cut some people loose and move on. The King of Swords is also an indication of a potential romantic interest that's coming into your life. So this romantic interest is someone who has really masculine and phallic energy, 
that doesn't mean that they identify as male but it definitely means that there's someone who has been through a lot who has matured and who isn't afraid to just tell the truth whether people like it or not the king of diamonds reversed shows me here that they also have strong earth sign placements so think taurus capricorn and virgo and they are someone who loves to get that coin they love to make money and to be successful in the earthly realms but they will not put money over their own sanity and over what feels good to them what makes sense in a logical way because the king of swords is a very logical individual and logical human being we already had the libra show up for you and i do want you to know here with the king of swords and the libra that fits together beautifully that's a type of air sign that we have coming towards you we've got the death card again group number four you cannot make this up i only noticed it just now we've got the death card again and i hope that you can appreciate that i am super honest when it comes to these readings i do not pre-prepare files i do not cut out any part of readings or reshuffle and reselect cards that i think people will like better i just tell it like it is group number four because that is the most important thing to me as a reader not subscribe account not whether people like it it's integrity it's being honest within my pick a card psychic tarot readings so i do want you to know here with the death card showing up three times in three different decks that february is going to be a completely fresh slate a completely new beginning there's no other way to put it group number four you are going to have to start from zero when it comes to your love life you're going to have to meet completely new people any exes or people who you were in past connections with it's just it's never going to happen okay it's never going to be the right thing for you and i can see here within the three of diamonds that using your time in the wisest way possible and also at times distracting yourself from feeling bad about the decisions that you may have made can serve you immensely because wiping the slate completely clean and having to cut off someone who was maybe once so important to you whether that is a family member or a friend or an ex-lover is going to take a toll on your mental space and i see in the wheel of fortune reversed that it will take time for you to get into a place where you truly feel like you've gotten over being strong for yourself and for all of us who are empaths for all of us who are super in tune with other people's emotions and absorb that stuff so quickly it can be very hard when you have to reject someone or you have to set boundaries with another person because there is still this feeling of guilt right but i see here in the death card that a relationship has completely run its course it's overdue for you to get rid of and the universe is kind of putting out all of these red flags and telling you that you have to now focus on self-preservation or you may end up feeling a lot more hurt than was necessary in lifting the veil i can see that you have to question everything every single little relationship no matter how long you have had people in your life for just because they have been there since birth or for x amount of years does not mean that they are still deserving of that spot it takes constant work and love and reciprocity in order for relationships to be healthy it's not a one-way street and anything unaligned must go that is one thing that i see here in lifting the veil next up we've got lost lands so in lost lands i can see here that you've done this once before and it's important for you to just remind yourself that you can do it again and also to keep in mind here that with the king of swords the libra the first house we definitely have someone who is super attracted to who you are as a person both physically as well as psychologically and mentally so make room for this person as i can see that they are meant to take up a significant amount of space within your life but they won't be able to do so if you're keeping a lot of people around you who are blocking out your blessings i can see here within the queen of coins group number four that you can be kind but still direct you can be real but still care about others you don't have to decide between being a good person and being honest and maybe telling some people that you just can't be friends with them anymore or that you just don't feel like the relationship is serving you anymore as i can see here within the princess of 
coins that it is definitely something that propels you back to some childhood memories where you found it very hard to speak up so february is going to bring up those types of emotions but you're going to be reminded that you're not that inner child of yours anymore you're not in that space anymore even though you may be triggered to fall back into those old patterns i see here in the princess of coins and the queen of coins that you have definitely gone through a lot of growth and a big transition that has put you in a place where now you are confident enough to set boundaries and to be very real and honest about what you expect out of friends and lovers and what you definitely don't want. The Princess of Wands reversed shows me that it's also a time for you to finally experience new things and to get out of your own way. So experience new things romantically, maybe with the King of Swords, if you know what I mean, group number four, and not be afraid to just say yes to more things last but not least in the two of chalices this is one of the mo most favorable cards of the tarot when it comes to love group number four february will have a happy ending in store for you i can see here in the two of chalices that there is mutual love respect and feelings of fondness so if you manage to do what you know you need to do which is cut off some dark clouds some leeches some energy vampires then do know that february is going to be a really positive and awesome month for you where the focus lies in your happiness new experiences finally 2022 being your turn and also finding romantic love that is passionate but also mutually respectful where there is reciprocity so there are definitely two different sides that need to be figured out on one hand there is your love life on the other hand there are situations that have overstayed their welcome that you have to get rid of and one side may make you a little more anxious and the other side may be an excitement that is more joyous but it's all about finding the balance in that group number four and i am convinced that you will be able to do so you know who you are what you're capable of and what you deserve so group number four don't settle for any less than that thank you so much for being here and for spending this divine time and space with me know that i'm sending you so so much love and i'll catch you during one of my upcoming predictions